Let's talk about pinpoint pitching here in MLB The Show 22 and how we can master pitching in this game to help us become a much better player and elevate our playing level. Pinpoint pitching to me has been an awesome change. I don't consider myself to be that great of a player at all. I'm definitely butt average. I'm not bad. I have my moments, but I consider myself to be carried by my pitching. I made World Series pretty consistently last year in OB21 and was able to go flawless as well. So I may not be a top tier player, but I think pitching is something that helps me out a lot. And I can give you a couple tips and perspectives of some things we can do to improve our pinpoint pitching and have better success pitching overall here in MLB The Show 22. And we can utilize that to carry us forward. So first off, you know, we do have the hand cam on for this one. I'm going to walk you through everything I'm doing. You're going to be able to see what I'm doing here with the hand cam. I will say as well, we are playing on Xbox. This is not the Xbox remote that comes with the console. I'm on the Series S, the Series S slash Series X remote. It is very bad if you're playing pinpoint on xbox and you're struggling to hit your locations for example we throw a circle change and your circle change looks something along those lines right there don't think that you just suck it might be your controller i'm currently using a power a controller i got it for like 30 bucks at walmart and it is buttery smooth absolute game changer and i hit much better with it as well so i definitely recommend looking at one of those if you're on xbox real quick i will show off my settings as well we'll come in here go to gameplay go to our pitching obviously using pinpoint here we'll be practicing here on hall of fame so i can show off that pitching is still we can definitely still locate our pitches on a higher difficulty obviously using hall of fame i like my feedback on i pitch from the same view i hit from to allow me to see more pitches from that view pitch trail on is a big one for me a lot of people like the fade or like the classic or the classic fade i like pitch trail trail on i think it allows me to better locate my pitches and allows me to more effectively work on some tunneling which we'll go into a little bit later on in the video as well those are my pitching settings though let's go ahead let's hop into it here of course our basic of pinpoint we're gonna pick up a fastball here and we're gonna see this circle with a line in it pop up on our screen followed by a little ball that is going to track and trace and that's basically telling us what we need to do we need to go straight down we need to go straight up we hit that 100 accuracy and then there is another aspect of as well you can see as we go straight down and straight up we have this circle that pops up at the bottom it closes in and we want to pull down our pinpoint motion as soon as that circle is closing in we'll come here throw one more fastball so you can get an idea of it as well we're gonna go straight down straight up we got to get the pacing right on that that circle pops up right as it closes in i'm a little bit late on that slightly left on the motion as well not a bad input overall that is one thing out the gate though is that is going to tell you exactly what to do pinpoint can be a little confusing there's not many uh tutorials on it in game but the pinpoint motion is going to tell you exactly what to do same as well if we throw a slider here if you're struggling on your pacing of the pitches as well all these pitches are going to have a different pace if you're consistently too fast maybe you're consistently too slow and you're getting pitches that are looking something like that come in here watch that ball be tracked through the motion so again we'll look at it again watch that ball track through the motion we are replicating that speed so i can come in here i can see that speed I can replicate that then come down and we throw the perfect pitch hall of fame slider not a whole lot of accuracy we didn't quite hit our location on that but we did have a perfect input on my end not much more we can do on that front but there are a couple of things that we're going to get into to help you miss properly here as well as we get into it speaking of that accuracy as you can see here on the slider there's this shadow around the ball that is going to be the region in which your ball can touch if you throw it perfect so it won't necessarily end up within the circle but it will be touching the circle so for example if i threw this pitch right here and it was perfect the pitch could end up more towards the top of the zone right here still just barely touching that circle of that shadow and that's going to change based off our pitches obviously something like a fastball you're going to have a much smaller perfect accuracy region we're going to be able to be way more accurate with this pitch so if we did want to come in come up here dot something inside outside put something on a corner we can do that with a lot more accuracy than our off speed pitches as well to note a big change for you with the show 22 with pinpoint pitching is that our perfect accuracy region is now variable as we can see our slider here we bring that to the bottom of the zone it's just covering up um about two-thirds of that bottom of the zone 
from the edge of the shadow to the edge of the shadow we got about two thirds across the bottom of the plate however if we bring that pinpoint meter up we can see it's now taking up 90 80 percent of that strike zone that perfect accuracy region that shadow is growing exponentially as we bring it up closer to the top of the zone and basically what's going to happen this year is going to be punished for throwing pitches that aren't in a standard location if we throw sliders high that's not a traditional location we're going to be punished for that we throw a circle change same thing we're going to be punished for throwing it high we're going to be more accurate as we throw a circle change lower in the zone as that's kind of the traditional location for it now one pitch that isn't affected fastballs not affected at all you can see the perfect accuracy region gonna stay the exact same regardless of the location same as well with two seamers two these are gonna stay the exact same also no change to those also cutters cutters are gonna be the same regardless of the location but sinkers will be significantly nerfed in terms of accuracy on high and inside high and outside high and wherever sinkers will have significantly less accuracy this year so and definitely be ready to locate properly down in the zone because that's going to be where we're going to get the most accuracy from our pitches so in terms of starting out i definitely recommend coming in here working through different pitches to learn the motions once you learn the motions of these pitches they do become a lot easier 75 percent accuracy there but we can pretty regularly uh get very high accuracy on our pitches we'll come in here with a slider right there come in 90 percent we can get the motion down properly because we've taken the time to come in and learn these motions same with our delivery as well our timing of when the grom is going to release that ball and pull down that is going to adjust as well so if we get take up the grom we have him to our dd squad hop in here in this practice mode and spend a little bit of time working with him learn some of those timings and motions that'll be a real 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 big benefit now in terms of pitching we do want to make sure that if we miss we miss in a good spot if i have a righty batter up here and i'm trying to throw this away slider and i come in here and i miss my location and it's to the left there's a good chance that that pitch is going to hang up so what we can do here we have our pinpoint we can see i need to pull straight down essentially after finishing the motion to locate this properly but i do want to ensure that this pitch is away so i'm gonna come in here i'm gonna try to dot it up but if I do miss, it is going to miss a way just like that. We'll do that again so you can see it real quick. At, if you notice, I'm just going to pull down a little bit to the right side of the circle right there. We actually hit it perfectly. Got a little bit of a bad RNG on where that ball ended up. Let's go a little bit to the right of the circle this time. And we can see that's a miss, but it is a good miss. That's a pitch that's not going to be hit very well. Versus again, if we throw that slider, we miss to the left it is most likely going to be crushed which is another thing as well as we move left and right with these we'll come in here and if you notice you can move this up at the top before you move your motion down so if i'm throwing a fastball and i want it to be inside here i don't have to go down up hold it up and then pull down into the left i can go down and up move it to the right ever so slightly and that's a better angle for me to move it down we missed it on that one that was a bit of a weird motion but for me this helps me get a little bit better angle and ensure that i can get to the left inside of it and if i miss it's most likely not going to be too bad of a miss as well we can also do the same thing but going this way to ensure that we keep it inside those are a little bit exaggerated motions but you get the idea of what we're going for again if we want to go with the slider outside i can just move a little bit to the left work it outside and ensure that if i miss it's not a bad miss at all that's one of the biggest tips i have with this is that you're not locked into place with where you move the most you actually have a lot of flexibility with this as long as you have that motion down and the timing of it the rest of it you have a ton of flexibility to do with what works same as well with a lot of these motions that are working around the outside of the controller just use this outer edge as you can see i am pushing this down as far as it goes on my controller so when i throw a curveball right here i'm pushing that down and i'm just using the edge of the controller to make that motion i'm not having to be perfectly accurate with that motion the edge of the controller is going to make that motion for me that allows us to be a lot more accurate with our pitches as well now once we get our motions down and we're focusing on our accuracy that's what i would start with be accurate lock in be able to hit your timing your pacing all that stuff then we can start mixing in some different pitch differentials for example one of my favorites right here especially going up against a righty batter 
right? We'll have this slider. I can see kind of the break of the slider with the pitch trail, which is why I like the pitch trail being on. I can see that this is going to break outside to the right. I know that being a slider, but it's nice to visualize it as well. Visualize exactly where it's going to end up. Get this slider to just break slightly away outside, just like that. Then we could come back in here. We get that a couple of times, especially with the ground, with how fast they are. We could come back in and mix it up with a fastball now. Your opponent is going to think it's going to break outside, but we just come in, dot up that fastball. It stays in there for a strike. You can freeze a lot of people on that. So I definitely recommend trying to learn some tunneling aspects. If you want to know more about tunneling, there are a lot of channels out there that have a ton of tips on that. And if you want to see something from me, I can put together something as well. Being able to fool your opponent in this game is more important than ever with a lot of the changes. We're going to be working a lot outside with the PCI changes and how that's going to affect things we want to be able to be accurate with those pitches when we do so and ensure that when we're throwing strikes they're not going to get crushed because you're going to run into those people who just absolutely crush strikes you got to know how to pitch to those guys one thing i do recommend as well with pitching final little pro tip here varies by your quality opponent but definitely learn what your opponent is doing for example a lot of people while they're hitting are going to slam their pci down they're going to slam it down they're gonna slam it up they're gonna slam it to the left and slam it to the right so if i'm here and i'm throwing a fastball right up here up and in and i dot it up and someone slams their pci all the way to the top of the zone they're gonna make a really solid contact on that ball however if i take this pitch and just move it down to right there now all of a sudden when they slam their pci it's now just going to be a ground out same can be said for low pitches instead of working right here they slam their pci they hit a line drive opposite field probably for a double maybe even triple with a fast batter i move the ball up to right there or move the ball even down further but if i want to keep it a strike i move that ball up to right there all of a sudden when they do make contact with that after slamming their pci they're only going to pop up that ball at best of course, sometimes you're going to get some Mickey Mouse exit velocities, but we can't control that pitching wise. All we can do is control them making weak contact on the ball. So I definitely would recommend staying away from your extreme corners and working just a little bit off of the corner. That's one of my favorite strategies and approaches to take. Let's work slightly off of those corners with all of our pitches. Work slightly below the corners because a lot of people are going to be sitting on the four corners, especially with anchoring this year, and they're going to be slamming their PCI to those locations. If we can play that into our favor and induce weak contact, we can be really effective pitching. Again, we're working somebody, they're slamming their PCI, they're crushing low pitches. We get them to just be a little bit higher up in the zone. We get them to pop up that pitch right there. That is a really effective result for us. Also, be sure to pay attention to their timing as well. Someone who's crushing those inside fastballs, we're working with this away circle change that sits up in the zone, just like one of these pitches right here. They roll over on that 100% of the time. They're going to be way too early when they're swinging at that pitch. They're not going to get a good exit velocity on that. They're going to roll over it, and it's going to be a nice, easy out for you. So those are my pinpoint pitching tips. I do recommend hopping to batting practice, throwing on Hall of Fame, throwing on Legend, learn the pacing of the motions for each pitch, learn the type of motion you have to do, and start learning a few pitchers' deliveries and their speed with those deliveries. From that point, once we dial in and we're being accurate with our pitches more often than not, we can start working on our location of our pitches, our sequencing of our pitches, and we can really take our pitching and develop that to being an elite tool to help us be successful here and it will be the show 22 if you have any questions about pinpoint pitching or pitching in general definitely be sure to hit me up down in the comment section below as always you enjoyed the video definitely be sure to leave a like and subscribe the road to 25k is so close i can almost taste it until next time i'll catch y'all around